I'm not gonna lie, um, sugar helps. It's all about my rings. Today, we're breaking down the Max Boss trailer edit. It's not like it was a huge edit or anything, but I just feel like there were some little bits in there that could be really useful for editors or, well, editors, yeah. Just straight up editors, so <laughs> let's jump in. The main aim as a short form creator is to hold attention spans at all times. Hearing, seeing something, sm not smelling, not smelling, but it could even be as simple as you wondering why I'm so low in frame right now. It should be up here, right? For this video, I will give you three main takeaways that you can take away with you. That is what a takeaway is. Okay, so the brief was, I'm gonna give you a 60 minute full cut of the live show for my stand-up social butterfly. You've gotta go from that to a short 40 to 60 second cut down trailer. It's gonna excite people, it's gonna make people wanna watch the main show. That's the aim, that's what we're going for. Okay, so one thing I think is really important about every single project you do is to get a good understanding of context. Who is the client? What are they trying to achieve? You know, because Max has got his success through YouTube. So I felt like it was quite important to address some of that in the trailer. Okay, so this is what I've got to work with. I've got a one hour full show here. No camera angle choices, so this, is, this has already been cut. So I can't pick another camera angle. The most important thing here is to break this down. And I'm so keen on breaking stuff down. You know, I feel like sometimes people just try and tackle this stuff head on without kind of like really knowing what they're working with. So I watched the whole thing twice with my girlfriend. It's quite useful actually being around other people if you're doing something like this because, you know, if she laughed at a good joke, I made a note of the time code. So yeah, I'm going through and I'm picking the best bits. And as you can see on my timeline, here they are. And then I end up with, what's this? Four minutes, three minutes. Three minutes of funny short liners. Is that, is that a that I can use in my trailer. Boom, you've got 60 minutes down to four minutes. Nice. Okay, so now it's, it's more about the order. I'm looking for something that's funny, that's maybe intriguing, connects with the fact that he's a YouTuber. I feel that's quite important for his audience. Maybe just be like, oh, that's Max Bosch, you know, the guy I saw on YouTube. Dynamic is a big one. You know, in the trailer, we want to have a variation of, of whether he's on stage, whether there's a, you know, the screen, whether he's got a prop, whether there's like, connecting with the audience. We want to see all that in the trailer because that's what we get in the show. If we just select clips from you know him just standing in stage at the same point, it's going to be kind of boring for the trailer. So so yeah, as I mentioned, Max is well known for his YouTube stuff. So I said that a lot of night, but I don't know. So I thought the first clip that would be good. It's time now for a bit of a change of pace. Let's talk about my penis. I was going to go with that one, but. Normally you could hide behind your usernames in the comments section. Suck your mum 63, I know you're here somewhere. <laughs> you know, it's funny, it's a YouTube reference. You know, he's, he's talking about the fact that, he, you know, he was on YouTube, but now he's here in front of you on the stage. Next clip. What's happening? London Palladium! <laughs> Energy, yes. So we're getting an idea now what this is. This is YouTube Max Bosch on stage at London Palladium. You know, that energy is good there, I like that. Thank you. You all sat there wondering whether this is going to be funny. Don't worry, Hannah, me too. <laughs> it's a great line. We know him as Max the YouTuber. This is him on stage. We're wondering, is this going to be funny? You know, he's he's kind of saying that out in the open. I, yeah, I think that's good. And it, it works for the trailer as well, because this is the first time we're kind of seeing him like this. You've genuinely got a note that just says, shame. <laughs> I like that shot. Max is holding a phone. We established that this is someone from the audience's phone and not Max's phone. You imagine ha having this shot without that clip in. You genuinely got a note that just says shame. If you don't hear the youve at the start, the viewers might be thinking, is this his own phone? Like whose phone, what is going on here? So that shot is actually crucial. And it's good because it, it's a different thing that isn't just Max on stage. Dynamic, remember? Keeping the brain moving. So number one in this video was clip selection. Number two is, uh, Pacing. The edit is the pace. Well, there's a lot of other stuff too, but a lot of it, pacing. I think pacing correlates a lot to attention spans, and I don't know if you know the state of the internet at the moment, but attention spans is incredibly important. And I'm not necessarily I'm saying like you have to do that in like, this kind of fast paced kind of style, but it's just the way that I like to edit. But there are other ways too, so that's cool. So obviously, once you've done your, your shot selection, you'll end up with something that looks a bit like this. Okay, so here the, the camera stopped recording, and I didn't realize till afterwards. So basically I'm saying you want to find a song that fits well with your clips and uh, 
and just and just lay it underneath the clip and just see how it feels to like play back with the visual. The song you use does make a big difference to the pace when you edit. So find a song before you start editing the clips and just see how it feels with the track. I got this track from Premium Beat. I often go to them for commercial work that needs kind of like high quality sound and, and specifically beats. Okay, so this is probably quite a basic example. Uh, very basic. The original sounded like this. What's happening? London Palladium! Okay, so that, I mean, if you look at these two clips, and this is the original here, and this is the two we ended up with, I, it's li that's literally just cutting out, um, I don't know what, maybe half a second or something. What's happening? London Palladium! You know, we're, we're straight in there, we're, we're keeping this condensed. In this clip, we're giving the viewer time to drop off. What's happening? London Palladium! Don't let, don't give the viewer time to drop off. Next example. Thank you. Thank you is quite good with a cheer. You know, it's telling the, telling the viewer, audience, thank you. But, but not enough for good retention. So what do we need on top of that? Live from London, it's another message. Those two added together gives retention, gives interest, gives the viewer's mind doing something. Thank you. You're sat there wondering whether this is going to be funny. Don't worry, Hannah, me too. Uh, what was the job that you got the work? The delivery line on that was, was good. You don't really want to actually... See, there, there are some exceptions to this rule where you, you obviously don't want to, in this case where it's a comedy thing, the, the delivery of the joke is quite important. And if you're cutting into the joke, may, maybe where we have this kind of quiet, this gap here, you know, you really don't want to be doing this. They're wondering whether this is going to be funny. Don't worry, Hannah, me too. It, that's not good. It's, it, that ruins the delivery of the joke, so don't do that. Uh, what was the job that you got that you weren't qualified for, Debs? <laughs> yeah, who here hasn't slept with my dad? So sometimes around clips that you want to use, there are like little bits, like this bit here. Debs, love it. Uh, you what... know, it's that kind of like camp thing, but it's kind of funny. It, it, it's a bit of a, I would say in this situation, it's not part of the joke and you, you, you cut it out. Debs, love it. Uh, what was the job that you got that you weren't qualified for, Debs? <laughs> The one that my father gave her! Okay, so that's a classic example where maybe you don't want it, because Max is just repeating what uh, Debs said in the audience. So, for, I mean, for a trailer, you know, you're not getting any new information there, so cut it. Daddy, you dog! I would say I cut that as well. Um, I just thought the next line was funny. I didn't know about this. We are going to have words. <laughs> um, Josh, what was the job that you got that you weren't qualified for? Oh, wait, mate, it's not it's not till a bit later. I didn't... Same thing! Dad, who have you... <laughs> hey, who here hasn't slept with my dad? That line was much later on in the show. I'd forgotten about that. Uh, yeah, I just thought that was kind of funny, because it was like... It's kind of like, I just... I mean, I'm, I'm quite a fan of the kind of humour, like, self-deprecating. Is that it? Self-deprecating? I think it is self-deprecating. I really like that kind of humor, so maybe I was going in a bit too hard on that, but, you know, it was like this kind of like, Max is in the lurch. You know, Max, like, Max isn't aware of this thing that's going on, and it's, and, you know, it's kind of funny. And I also liked how, with this shot... Hey, who here hasn't slept with my dad? Max is asking a question, and we're seeing him ask it, and then the shot after, we're seeing the audience. That, that feels very nice as a viewer because you're, you're connecting a bit to the audience. You see he's asking someone a question. You can see the people there. So that's, that was quite cool as well. This bike must be really creepy. You don't seem creepy. Okay, so we've got this boy must be really creepy. You don't seem creepy. He's kind of saying the same thing twice. He's using this word creepy twice. So we don't need to see him say that twice. So instead, we're choosing to have the visual on screen over the first part of what he says and then the second part we can see him say it. This bike must be really creepy, you don't seem creepy. Because to be honest, we probably read a hilarious hour. A hilarious hour. This bike hour. must be really this creepy, creepy, you don't seem creepy. Your brain is constantly engaged. So we, Max is kind of mumbling, we've got some friends down here. We've got family in the boxes. So, you know, we're still on the previous joke when we're here, we've got some friends down in the boxes. We've got some friends down, they've got family in the boxes. It's, it's overlapping, I think that's really important because if, if we just had this on its own, We've got some friends down here, got family in the box. It's not needed. Overlap it. We've got some friends down here, got family in the boxes. You got mum, dad. 
Why are you guys signing different boxes? Okay, I love this section. This section is so good because because it's like Max's look on on his face at this in this bit is like, what is going on? Why? Why are you guys signing different boxes? I I don't know what's happening. And it's got like this kind of look here, kind of like oh, this kind of look on his face. It's just like, what? <laughs> I think it's kind of funny. You know, we, we, we're kind of like confirming that in this next bit. Why are you guys signing different boxes? You know, why are you guys signing different boxes? What's going on? What does everyone else know that I don't know? And on top of that, because we're kind of continuing the same joke, we've got a new visual, bringing the joys of YouTube to the stage. Something else for the mind to do. You genuinely got a note that just says shame. Okay, so th this shot, I think I mentioned this earlier, but this shot was really important for clarity of like what's going on. And also without it, we've got this shot for- you genuinely got a note that just says shame. It's too long. Yeah, we would have had that shot for, how long is this? Okay, well two seconds, well, nearly three seconds. Doesn't sound like long, but that's really long. So we can break it up with this shot. You genuinely got a note that just says shame. I love the new camera angle on this bit for the delivery. That's great as he turns towards the audience. Shame. New perspective, like a new laugh, big laugh. That's great. And the music pumps. Oh my God. People, it's really important to pump the music when no one's speaking or nothing's happening. There are some exceptions to this, so don't take this as gospel, but we want to have the audio high. So, you know, if, if there's a gap for a second or two with no one talking, pump the audio. Shame. I, I quite liked in the music there, the da -na 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 -da -na -da -na, that bit, and then having that kind of, uh, just Max's vibe of him when he was like turning around, doing that dance thing. That kind of felt quite cool, I thought. Thank you. I, I started with number three, so this one's... Number one. I can't express enough the importance of eye movement. Eye movement control. Whilst it's important to keep the, the pace good and the viewer engaged, if you go too far with that and the person's eye is having to I look all around the screen, it's getting a bit mental. You, there's gonna be, it's almost like too much effort. They're gonna, and they're gonna be like, this is, this, is, this, is, this is too much. I can't be asked to do this right now. I think in editing, it's not talked about enough that everywhere of every visual, whether it's cinema, like long form YouTube, whatever it is, someone is looking at a certain point on the screen. As a creator, we are, we're trying to control that a bit. You know, I, that's one of the reasons I actually quite like the fact that my studio has stuff going on. Because if you get a little bit bored of what I'm saying, maybe your brain just ticks over to this aperture lamp over here and thinks, oh, that's quite a cool little color lamp. I wonder what that is, I wonder how that works. But, and hopefully by the time you've thought about that, you're back on to what I'm saying because I zoom in the shot. So we're at the end of the video, it's hitting the climax. Max is on the far right of the screen here and then the middle of the screen here. And the cuts aren't very long. If you imagine your eye, you're, you're looking over here, you're like, okay, what's Max doing here? It cuts to here, okay, he's in the middle of the screen, and by the time your eyes get to the middle of the screen, we cut to red. And that isn't very nice for the viewer. So, you know, in a perfect world, we would have had a, another angle that wasn't the front-on angle where Max was in the center of frame. So basically, what I did is a middle ground, scaled up the image, moved him to the right bit, and keep scaling up until you hit the edge of the frame. About there, well, okay, there you go. Something like that. So he's positioned more closer to the center of frame, so your eye, so your eye as a viewer has less distance to travel. There was a bunch of other stuff that I could talk about in this edit, but let's be real, it's, it, the video would be too long and yeah, boring. And I'm gonna mention this again, but if you wanna learn more, I've got a full course coming out in maybe April time this year but you can sign up to the email list, it's on the link below, and you'll be notified about any updates. And also, if you sign up now, there's only 100 spots at the start, it's gonna be a 30% off, so you'll be notified about that, which is cool. Savings, woo! Kind of buzzing. Editing is made up of a million decisions. You know, even a small project like this, you are subconsciously making, over the time of the whole project, probably, probably maybe not a million, but, now a million, a million. Yeah, you're making a million decisions. And I kind of, I see it a bit as like a tree in the sense that, well, I bet you weren't expecting that, <laughs> a tree. Yeah, but you start here at the root and your first decision, you might go this way, you might go this way, you might go this way. You know, the, the, at the very start, it was about which clips are we using. That's an important decision. But once you made that decision, you're on to the next phase. So it's like, we all start here. We're all given the same edit to do, we all start here. But different people will end up with completely different results. 
And I feel like over the years, when you watch hopefully a video like this, when you watch other YouTube videos, when you pick up things, when you learn things, you're learning to make better and better decisions so that you end up at a point on the tree that works, that's good for the client, that's good for the viewers, that everyone's happy with. You know, that's really what hopefully even this video will do a tiny bit. Will just help, maybe you've picked up a few little tips or a few thoughts that you will use in your subconscious on the next edit that will forward your work as a creator. That's what I'm trying to do, um, but yeah. Okay, so, so yeah, let me know if you enjoyed this video in the comments and I'll um, maybe see you in another video. Bye.